so this is right when uh, Vancouver had lost the fight versus uh, Shock here because Shock they used Grab and Bomb and ton of ults and Titans they also used ults. But uh, anyways, Shock they ult down in ult economy going forward here, and Super he has no primal available. We'll see Bumper try to make some space on point. And Super he can't really aggress onto the backline or he will get deleted. So Super has to play it very safe, in other words. He has to hide, he has to deny space. And this is a reactive engage with reactive positioning, well, defensive positioning and then defensive rotation. So yeah, Bumper is gonna end up going for point. He tries to make some space. And then Super has to respond by moving to point as well. Super has several objectives at the same time here. He has to survive, contest point, and build primal. Vancouver, they're gonna force him to escape, and then Moth uses a sound barrier to be able to keep the contest going, but also save Super. Super rotates back to point, Choi moves out, and Shock is simply playing slow and defensive here. Now, you see the kill on Bumper there, Choi is gonna move out, Bump, uh, Sh uh, Super comes back in, now watch how he hugs the, the corners, just hugs the wall, the nice base, and just plays it very safe even when Huxal is there. He, he's always ready to cut LOS, line of sight, and not to get booped and also keep the space on point for his teammates. This is how Shock manages to win the last fight regardless of being down in ult economy. And this is, yeah, Shock just playing extremely well fundamentally. First fight on the cough is always the most important one because of ult economies, just snowballing, and it's very hard to take back a point once you've uh, capped it. Or oh, the enemies have capped it, I mean. So what we're gonna see is a uh, proactive engage from Super. Not only Super, but the rest of the team, of course. And it's gonna create a lot of space. It involves very, very, what to say, fundamental positioning, but also fundamental mechanics. So if we get going here, Super, he's gonna meet Bumper in the middle of the point and takes over the space with aggressive positioning. It might seem like Moff is the key difference here. You know, Moff is with Super while Slime is not with Bumper. But that's not only it. Super is enabled by Moff so that he can get a second swing into Titans which then boops them back and allows for Shock to hold them at the stairs. And this will put Tyrants at a great positional disadvantage. So if we just watch this here, first swing goes into bumper. Reinhardt he always swings from right to left. So first swing went into bumper here. Second swing goes into the enemy team and that boops them backward. It's super making the space here. So what we're gonna watch here is Vancouver rotating to dark, then up to the side and try to enter point. They're gonna go back and forth with each other, and Vancouver they end up engaging. Super he ends up dying, and Violet he tries to he tries to save Super, but it's not enough with even with a trance. Yeah, now you can see focuses on Bumper, focuses on Super. Both teams trying to get some boops in, try to find stuns, and bubbles are being used. You want some energy on your Zarya, and. Just both teams taking it slow and safe, you know, you don't want to make mistakes in, in the very first fight. So now we're going to see Vancouver engage just in a short bit. Both Zens close to the, to the trance. There's the engage on the super. Super dies. Now, Shock, they want the fight to keep going. They're going to keep it going with a grab from Sinatra. Then uh, Super, he respawns and he's just coming back. Now, just when he arrives, he's about to get grabbed. There's the grab. He's gonna punish the lack of protection versus shatter here. Bumping not shielding, and everyone just blindly rushing to the grab. Getting a four man grab. Very big grab. Uh, shatter, I mean. Completely negating the grab and ends up winning the fight for Shock. So now, just imagine here Shock, they've been fighting on point. For 40%, you're gonna end up with around 50% by the time this fight is over, and that's essentially two fights. So, right now, we see Shock walking back after losing a fight and Vancouver capping the point. Bumper, he's gonna end up positioning on the left side of the pillar from a uh, super's perspective, 
and super, he, he now has shatter, of course. If you were super, you're going to punish poor positioning. Now, let me show you what poor positioning is. From a Rhinoch's perspective, this is an instant shatter. Well, almost instant shatter because Bumper here, he cannot shield for the teammates here. Very big. So Super picks up the shield, uses third person camera here, goes for the shatter, finds it. And even though Bumper doesn't get shattered, this will be enough for them to win the fight with. Super and company, they will push out on high ground here, flush out Tyrants, and once on low ground, Vancouver, they try to push into them, and Super plays it very safe with his shield, avoids getting boot by Slime, and then aggresses back on to, once Tyrants' power spike is gone. Now, power spike is, for example, when you have speed, when your bubbles up, when you have uh, high energy, or, you know, that kind of stuff. You have a stun from from Brig, or you have Brig heal, etc. They try to bait the, the engage from Vancouver here. That's why they save their speed for healing aura. They save the bubbles. Now, Vancouver engage. There's the bubble onto Super, protecting him from the boop. He shields from the boop as well. And because of the positioning here, notice how, well, soon. Shadow comes out. And he gets a free man shatter. Now, here's what I wanted you to pay attention to. Pay attention to the position of Bumper compared to everyone else. It's very difficult to play against him. Well, not difficult, but annoying because he's, he's going to spot every small mistake. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough focus by you here, but it's a strong shatter nonetheless. This is after Shock lost the fight. Now they come back for the second fight. Super is close to another shatter, and Shock they just try to get some energy for Sinatra to then rotate main while waiting for the bubbles. This is so that they don't automatically lose the fight because Yumisu he has more charge, and they would just simply have too too little resources, right, compared to Vancouver. Super plays it safe with his shield and avoids getting booted by Slime. He aggresses back onto Tyrants once Bumper is booted here. Notice how Violet has a shield. Sinatra barely gets any energy, by the way. Super, he pushes up. He notices that Bumper is positioning away from the team again. And they open themselves for another shatter. Very big, very, well, very big mistake here by uh, Vancouver. This is the correct move by Super. It might not be seen as it by media, reddit, whatever, but it's, it's, this is the correct play by, by Super. He goes for the Shatter, punishes Sumisu and Jono with Shatter, the rest of the team is focusing on killing Bumper on the other hand, but there's simply not enough damage because, yeah, Sinatra didn't get any energy on his bubbles. Now, Choi uses his bomb as well, and that's just to, to try and get something happening, because Sinatra's grab, it's almost over, well, at 0%, so you might as well use the bomb here. It's just unfortunate that Sinatra didn't get any energy, and it seems like the initial play was to try and kill Bumper while keeping everyone else distracted, well, not distracted, but, you know, down with the grab, uh, Shatter. They could have also simply gone on uh, on um, Sumisu and Janu from the beginning as well, but I think it's uh, just a play gone wrong, so to say. So what I want to show you here is how Shock wins the last fight on Anubis. Now, they have a lot of pressure on onto this fight because they are down in support alts. Sinatra might have a grab, but Twilight has a trance, right? So they're going to do a fake here. The goal with the fake is to make it so that Vancouver, they need to play it safe and defensive or sort of risky but aggressive. And... The choices are based on two pathings, starting with pathing one. If Shock rotates on the inside here, Bumper, he needs to set up indoors, well, in the corner here, you need to have Slime ready to boop, you have John ready to boop, etc. And what this does is it locks Vancouver into a specific position, which uh, would make it 
almost impossible to engage onto shock if they rotate on the outside. Now let's select a different color. Shock if they would rotate on the outside here. So the blue color here, pathing B, that's if shock rotates on the outside, Vancouver, they can choose to be aggressive and drop down on them. Then they can use trans, they can use bomb, they can, they can do a lot more. And the fake is what causes, um, how do you say it? It's going to cause them positional disadvantage for Vancouver, that is. Because if shock gets over here for free, then it's going to be as if Vancouver attacks them on point. So yeah, they rotate very well. They try to not get booped by slime as well. That's why Sinatra uses the bubble onto Super. Super, he's trying his best as well by shielding versus slime. The reason for the rotation here is because Super is extremely well protected by the environment here. And it, it was a proactive rotation that goes into reactive positioning. So that's where the complexity comes in. Now, this forces Bumper to be aggressive. Bumper becomes the aggressor, which gives Shock the opening for, try, for, for Grav, but also Shatter. And that's all simply due to the positioning. And it might feel like Sinatra is causing this. Well, well, the one winning the fight, uh, well, winning the... with the Grav because of the positioning, but it's actually Shock with the help of, well, mainly Super, making the space on point, forcing Vancouver to deal with them. Otherwise, Shocker is just going to kill him. So Grav is going to come out. Super he tries to put in some damage, ends up going low, has to fall back. Now, this is Bumper's turn to target him and try to... He's going to try to shatter so that Jonas Bomb goes through, through the shield, of course. Oh, well so that there is no shield blocking for Jonas Bomb. Super, on the other hand, he notices Huxal here. Huxal and Twilight getting shattered at max range. And this is some, simply another shatter punish, punishing the poor positioning. And this is poor positioning because it's outside of... Let's actually draw this. It's outside of Bumper's uh, shield LOS. So if... Well, they would need to be within within this uh, dotted line here in order to be safe from the shatter. Almost safe, but yeah. Very strong play from, from Super here. And it might yeah, you know, it might it might feel like Super is about to die even even though there's there's a bomb, but Choi he's gonna he's about to use his bomb as well. And the timing is very is almost perfect because now Bumper can't shatter, otherwise he dies from, from the bomb, of course. And it allows Super to block Jonas Bomb. Which then also blocks Bumper. Because Bumper can't shatter. Otherwise Bumper would have to go for you know behind, etc. And the bomb gets three kills. A complete stop to the play by Vancouver. This is the second fight on an, on Elios here, and we see Super setting up for Moff's boop here. He's playing very close to the corner, because then you know Moff is gonna boop enemies off from high ground, which then creates uh, this fight here on the low ground, and that's what, you know where the position is for. Moff, Moff is gonna end up getting booped off, and because of the boop, they have to rotate, play it safe, use the pillar to cut line of sight, and then force Vancouver to do something. Vancouver, they're gonna try to rotate because they see they, that they can't aggress. When the rotation comes out, Super follows them, moves forward, and which then baits Vancouver into trying to punish him by surrounding with Haxal, Sumisu, and Bumper. So now we see Sumisu, he drops down, Haxal is in the front, and Bumper is about to drop down as well. Super, he's very quick to punish uh, Haxal here because Obviously, Haxal is in range for the, for the hammer. And once Bumper drops down, Super 
instantly locks onto him, starts swinging, forces him back. And because of how fo forward the positioning is, it's very difficult to discord super while discording bumper is extremely easy. Just gonna show it again. As you see here, he's eliminating all of the LOS, so Sinatra becomes the discord target. And now bumper is focused. Bumper gets eventually dies down. There it is. Right after that fight, Super keeps rotating very far from very far up from corner to corner to always block for Sumisu and Bumper while shielding from Discord by breaking LOS. Or breaking LOS. He keeps his distance and is very strict with the corners so that it doesn't take too much time to break LOS when Vancouver engages. So now you see here, if we drop the corner here, if he would want to swing, he can stand close here. But now he has to back, and he's backing to this corner. Let's just drop this one as well for simplicity. He's standing right here on the well yellow mark, so that he's ready for engages from both sides. Now this might seem complicated, but it's not that complicated. This way, they can receive Vancouver, they can they can wait for Vancouver to use their speed and then they speed back into them. The fight, it doesn't go as planned because Jano is gonna eat Sinatra's grab and then Rascal dies in a grab. So Super, he's gonna try to get back to point. He pins the point and he's gonna try to stall. Super is gonna fall. There's simply too much damage, but even though Super dies, this was a good attempt at a recovery because it's, you know, it's worth mentioning that this fight is extremely hard to win. So what the recovery is not winning the fight, it's trying to set it up, set up yourselves for a good last fight. They started off at 60% and they're gonna end at 85%, which in itself is very valuable. And all they have to do now is win one last fight. One last thing I wanna show you guys is a reactive rotation into a proactive positioning. So Super in a nutshell is a very smart and strong Fundament well, fundamentally strong player when it comes to Reinhardt, especially. He's very solid with his positioning, rotations, and mechanics, in the sense that it's very hard to find openings versus him, and he doesn't play alone. Like, he has the shield in mind for his teammates. This is Vancouver just winning the last fight on point B. Now they're pushing the spawns here to get small charge, gain some more car time, and I want you to see how Super is playing the second corner which is right where Sumisu is right now. And he keeps Bumper under control while shielding for, um, no, not shielding, but shiel while shielding for Haxal and denying Slime Aboop. So Super, he's gonna go in for the Shatter. The Shatter finds nothing because Rascal is shielding, Sinatra has bubbles, Choyobin and Moth are on high ground here. Haxal tries to go for the stun, but he doesn't. Well, he doesn't get it because of the shield. Super is then ready to position in front of um, the team because he's going to be able to aggress onto Bumper here. Slime, he tries to boop. Boops him only f backwards. See this positioning on Super here. This is very common for Super. He always hugs this wall when he's, whenever he's walking here. And that's because of a bad experience probably in scrims with getting boop into, booped into a pit. And because of his positioning here, it forces Bumper to be on this side. And that leaves an opening for Moth to boop him down into Pit. Very easy fight, right? And that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this new format. The like and subscribe button and check in for more.